inherits are a really useful and interesting composition arc. Let's take a look at just bringing in as a sublayer this asset here. What we can see is that we get these little class primitives. And this is part of the way the asset was authored is that it had inheritance set up. And that's part of how some of the, the USD tools in Houdini will set stuff up for you if you use the component builder. But when we select the coffee mug and we can go into the metadata here, we can actually go down and we can see that there are some inheritance stuff in here. So we can see that there are inherit paths, meaning this coffee mug is actually looking at these prims here uh, as sort of a definition of what this coffee mug is. So right now there are no overrides in here, nothing's happening, but you'll see how this works in practice and uh, you'll see right now. So what I'm doing is I'm referencing in that coffee mug and I'm actually choosing it to make it an instance. Now remember, if something's an instance, we basically can only control the geometry properties and you know rendering properties, but we can't alter geometry. Um, you know, we can't go in to the materials and change the materials. We're kind of locked here because it is instanced. So what do we do? What do we do if we've instanced this in and we want to make a change, right? Like let's say I want to add a red ball here. I would need to go back into the original reference and make that change. And then it would globally broadcast to all of these here, but who knows what else I'm changing, right? Cause somebody else might be referencing that coffee mug as well. And we, we don't want to do that. We don't want to ruin our original reference. So this is where inherit comes in very usefully. So let's take a look at what's going on. So I have a sphere and I have a material applied and now I want to reference that into the coffee mug and have it apply to every instance of that coffee mug. If I just try to do a plain reference here, so we can see right now I'm trying to reference it into the coffee mug geo, we have an error. And that's because these are instanced, they're locked, I can't do anything, I can't alter what's happening inside of here. However, if I go and I basically set up that class geometry here again, so I'm basically authoring what we saw before. We know that there's inheritance. If I select that reference, I select my coffee mug and go to the metadata and I can actually look and see that we do have inherit paths already set for us. I can recreate those paths here and I can reference into there. So you'll notice what happened is I referenced my sphere into that coffee mug hierarchy. And now when I toggle down my instances, what we'll see is that sphere actually exists in the coffee mug for every instance there. And that's a really important thing because it means that we can access this data and we can apply our own overrides in here, even though technically it's locked. And we can do this without polluting the asset and other people can still use the asset exactly as it was intended, but we have our own overrides just for that asset in this shot or in this scene. The specialized composition arc works in a very similar way to the inheritance composition arc. The difference being that inheritance is much higher up in the opinion stack, whereas specialized is down at the bottom. The typical use case for specialized is in refining materials in the asset level. So you might start with a basic version of a material and then you'll continue to build refinements through various stages while preserving the original material. Let me kind of show you how this actually looks here in a file. So I'm going to walk you through this setup here. Um, basically we have a torus, another one they're sitting directly on top of each other right here. I'm going to move them away from each other and then I'm setting up a class primitive definition here. So we have a material that's already been created ahead of time. This is just called master material. It's basically like a metallic material. And we're just standard referencing this in and putting it into our class here. What we can do here is we can now 
build a specialized material from the master material. And I'm doing that here. So I'm building a specialized material here. And what we'll notice is that it is referencing the master material. We can see the reference type as specialize. And we're doing the same thing. So we're building two different materials here. And then what we're going to do is edit some of the some of the properties on those materials. So we're just going to edit the color of one, the color of another, and then assign the materials. So if I turn these two off, what we'll see is basically uh, a reference to the master material. So if I go into the master material here, you know, and we play around with our specular roughness, right, you'll see that they both update at the same time. So on its own, you know, this doesn't really show much, but what actually changes here is once this would be saved out as an asset and then referenced back into a new scene, uh, this is kind of how it behaves. So basically what I'm doing here is referencing this entire thing in into a new uh, stage. So we can sort of pretend that we've written this to disk here. And let's say I wanted to broadcast some global changes to the specialized materials. So like the inheritance arc, we have to recreate the class hierarchy here. So that's what I'm doing. I'm just building the same class primitives up here. And then I can start to edit the master material. Now there's a lot of text over here. So let's do this. So this is editing the master material. So I go and I look for that uh, primitive and then I can path in here and uh, create the various uh, components that I would like to edit. And what we can see is something interesting. Unlike inheritance, you'll notice that base color already had an opinion written on it earlier in the specialize arc up in here. But we had no opinions that we actually wrote for roughness and metallic. So you'll notice I can play with base color as much as I want and nothing changes. However, I can adjust my specular roughness and they both update automatically. And same with metallic. Now this is very different to the way that inheritance works and it's because of the, uh, the strength of the opinion of a specialized arc. Now I can go to my specialized materials here and I can actually change these from specialized to inherit and then watch what happens. You can see that because the inherit arc is stronger than the specialized arc, that opinion now overrides anything that was going on in this chain. So if I go back to specialize, again, we're local, just like that. Now we can still make local opinion changes. It just means that doing it to the class primitive isn't going to broadcast everywhere, right? Because it's specialized. But I can still go and make an, a, lo a local opinion change this way. I can just go and find the local material and then I can override the color however we want. So specialize is a lot less commonly used, but this is sort of the general place that it's used and, and the reason for it being, um, you might see it other places, but it's probably one of the least commonly used of the composition arcs.